In this second calculus basics video, we're going to learn about integrals, which can also be called antiderivatives. An integral or an antiderivative is kind of the opposite of a derivative. It undoes what the derivative did. Just as subtraction undoes addition, and division can undo multiplication. Again, we're going to start off with the question and looking at some graphs. What information can be determined from the following velocity versus time graph? If you remember from last year, or you've read your textbook, the slope of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. And this is a fairly simple graph to find acceleration from because the slope of this line is constant since it is a linear graph. One thing we didn't discuss last year is that you can also find the displacement from a velocity versus time graph. You can do so by looking at the accumulated change, or the area under a curve. Now, saying the area under a curve is a little bit misleading, because really it's not the area beneath the curve, it's the area between the curve, or the graph of the line, and the x-axis. So sometimes it might be on top of the line, sometimes it might be below the line. Here it's both. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight or kind of um, color in that area. For this first portion, my area is beneath the graph here and is a nice triangle, so finding that area is not too hard. And for the other portion, it's above the graph here. It's this area here. Again, a triangle not too hard to find. Another important fact is that if the area lies below the x-axis, it's considered a negative area, whereas if the area lies above the x-axis, it is considered positive. I would add these two areas together to find the total displacement of my object. The accumulated change is a fancy way of saying the integral, or I should actually say the integral is a fancy way of saying the accumulated change. Just as with derivative, we said that was the instantaneous rate of change, the integral is the accumulated change. There is a small difference between an antiderivative and an integral, but we won't no worry about that too much. You will learn about that in calculus class. Instead, we're going to look at some notation. The integral uses a new symbol. It's called an integral symbol, and it looks something like that. And so if I do the integral of the derivative of f of x, I get out plain old f of x. It's a little bit on. Remember I was saying that it undoes that, it undoes the derivative. Another thing that's important in this notation is this dx right here. It's not actually a variable. It is simply a placeholder that tells us what the variable is. And so we're going to look at some common antiderivatives, some common integrals. Again, these are given to you on your equation sheet. And so this is something that you don't absolutely have to memorize, but you'll use them enough that you will memorize them pretty quickly. In this first one that you see here, it says the integral of a dx. Again, dx just tells us that x is the variable. a in this case then has to be some sort of number or some other constant thing. So the integral of a dx is a times x plus c. Now what the heck is that plus c? You'll notice that a couple of these have plus c on them. Well, with an antiderivative, when I take that antiderivative, there could always be some sort of constant there. Think about it. If I wanted to take the derivative now of ax plus c, a is a constant, times x raised to the n minus 1. Okay, well, n is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, and anything raised to the 0 is just 1, plus the derivative of c. Well, 
the derivative of a constant is just 0, so that would disappear. That means that any time we take the antiderivative, we can't know if there's a constant on there or not. So we put that plus c in there. You'll get used to that plus c in math class, because you'll be required to have it all the time. In physics, we use some initial conditions that are given to us to help us know exactly what that c should be. This next one down, the integral of a times x to the n dx, this is the most common one that we will use. And this is basically the form that undoes the most common derivative that we use. Okay? Let's look at some of these other ones. The integral of 1 over x dx. Let's think about that for a moment. Was there anything on our list that's derivative was 1 over x? Here's my list here. I notice that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. And then we add a plus c on. We always have to have that plus c there. Again, in physics, it'll usually be plus some number because we'll be given some sort of initial condition. Next, these two, sine and cosine, here. Well, looking back at my derivative rule, or my derivative rules, I see that sine and cosine end up interchanging with each other here. So the derivative of the cosine is negative sine, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So now I have to reverse that. The derivative of what gives me negative cosine of x, or antiderivative of what gives me negative cosine of x? Well, that must be the antiderivative of sine of x. Think about it this way. If I took the derivative of cosine of x, what do I get? If I take the derivative of cosine of x, I get negative sine of x. But it's negative, so a negative of a negative is a positive. If I take the derivative of sine of x, what do I get? Cosine of x. So the antiderivative of cosine of x dx gives me sine of x. The last one is probably my absolute favorite because it's the easiest thing in the entire world. If you notice on the previous list, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then, of course, I have to remember that plus c on there. That plus c will make more sense as we do some problems with it, so don't stress too much about that. So those are all antiderivatives. And the thing that really makes antiderivatives different than integrals, and more specifically definite integrals, is that with integrals we actually specify a starting and a final point. So you'll notice in this notation that on my integral symbol, I have an a and a b. I may say, looking back at my graph on this page, what is the displacement between 1 and 3 seconds? Well, if I wanted to denote that with the symbol form, I always do between 1 and 3 seconds, so a would be 1, b would be 3. And then what I do is I take the derivative of my function and then I plug in what we call limits. This 1 and this 3 are called limits. So I would plug in the top limit minus the bottom limit, final minus the initial. I wanted to introduce you to that, but we will go through that more in class and put the physics behind that so it makes a little bit more sense to you. Again, for some example problems, you may watch the video that has examples of derivatives and integrals.